Hey, how you doing teachers? This is Jacob Clifford. Now I've got a great activity for you macro teachers. It is macro activity 4.3, FedEx's Fix the Economy. This is brand new. I've been thinking about it since this summer, thinking about an activity, it's a game actually, that can help students practice uh, calculating the money supply, understanding the three different things the Fed can do to the money supply or to increase it or decrease it, right? Reserve ratio, discount rate, and open market operations. In this activity, students practice all that stuff. At the same time, they have a little fun by playing a game. So here we go. The first thing you're gonna have to do is download the PDF for this activity, and I put it in the description below. But I was gonna actually only make it available to teachers that buy my teacher resources, and I realized, you know what? Uh, I want more teachers to, to do this cool stuff and I don't want to hold people back. And if you like my videos and if you like my teacher activities like this, then take a look at the teacher resource. I promise you they're worth it. But anyways, download the PDF. You're going to get several different pages and it has instructions for the students. The first page you're going to see is this right here. It's basically uh, the worksheet that students are going to be working on with the instructions in the very beginning. Yeah, students are the former Fed chairs, the Fed X's, and their job is to fix the economy while racing a car the country. And the country uh, is actually uh, this right here. It's the uh, map of the Federal Reserve System. And they start in San Francisco in District 12 and then move all the way through until they get to Boston in District 1. So it kind of has a game board that goes along with it and it has game pieces and it's a game. But again, they're calculating the money supply. They're using uh, the idea of monetary policy to figure out if they're going to help or hurt the economy. And by the way, this video is not designed to be shown to students. This is kind of the behind the scenes stuff for teachers. I did make a separate video designed only for the students that kind of introduces the activity so you don't have to introduce it in your class. You're going to show the quick video and then boom, jump straight into the activity uh, with your students. First thing students need is they're going to all need one of these sheets. Uh, every single student needs one of these. You're going to need one of these uh, game boards for every group of students. The group is between two and four students. You can't really go five or six, it gets too complicated for that. Also, make sure to give each group a set of the game pieces. Now, the game pieces come on this sheet that looks like this. Uh, you can see I've already cut one of them out, but it's got Paul Volcker, Alan Greenspan, Ben Bernanke, and uh, Janet Yellen. So I've already printed those out and cut them out for you. They're going to look like this. That's what you've got uh, all set to go. Now, of course, you've got to finish these off. What you do here is you fold this forward on that line. It kind of has some basic instructions on how to do this. And then you fold it back on the other line and that becomes kind of your game piece that can kind of stand there and move across the board kind of like that. If you can see, that's what it looks like. It might be a little easier also to put some tape on there. If you put some tape on there, it makes it a little easier for it to stay up and gives it a little more rigidity. So again, if you put it like this, uh, she's not going anywhere. That's what she looks like. There it is, Janet Yellen. FedEx right there. So you do that with all the other uh, game pieces. You can have the students do this before you run the activity or just give the students the pieces or have them cut it out. Um, personally for me, I'd rather have some students help me out like the day before and cut all the pieces out so I'm not doing the day of. I want to go in with activities. Kids get in the room, you know, I'd show them the video of me introducing the activity and then boom, get straight to it as fast as possible. Okay, now that you have the game pieces all set up, now you have to cut out uh, the scenario cards. And again, I'll explain all this in a second, but basically cut out all of these cards, have each group have a set of cards. That's important. You don't, uh, not each student has one of these cards or these cards, but each group has a set of these 12 cards. Now we have all of the scenario cards cut out. It doesn't really matter. They're organized A, B, C, D. Uh, you can mix them up. In fact, Definitely mix them all up so they're not, uh, they're all completely random. That's all part of the game. So get those things all set to go. Again, every group is going to need one map, a set of the player uh, pieces, and then a set of these cards. And each individual student is going to need one of these worksheets so they can fill out their results. And the last thing students need is a digital device they can give to a website. The website is right there, acdcecon.com backslash FedEx's fix. So if they go to that site, it'll give them the last step they need. And what they need is this site right here. Uh, this site, and I'll go ahead and put it on the screen, uh, tells you uh, the, basically it's kind of like the dice that students would play with or how they, you know, progress the actual game. It's got the Fed action, the reserve requirement, and the initial change. Again, I'm going to go over all how you play this game in a second, but I'm just showing you the resources right now. 
Now let's talk about gameplay. Again, I talked about it in the other video and gave instructions to students. I'm gonna go a little slower and give a little more details in this video for the teachers. So first, uh, each player chooses a former Fed chair. So we have each person uh, do that in the group. All the students start on District 12. So they put all their uh, papers here on District 12. Obviously, they're gonna have a hard time fitting as they move on, but who cares? The reason why I have the map, by the way, is so they can kind of see how the uh, Federal Reserve System is organized. One player picks up one of these scenario cards. These scenario cards tell you where the economy is or what's happened. They're not, this is not their card. This is the group's card to tell them where the economy is for everybody. So they read this to the group and they write it down here on uh, their game or their uh, worksheet that goes along with it. This is scenario L. Unemployment rate is 5%. Inflation rate is 10%. 10%. An increase in exports has increased nominal GDP and higher price levels. Congress has decided not to use fiscal policy to address the issue. And the last sentence says the Fed X's are looking to use monetary policy to improve the economy. Again, since the inflation rate is 10%, which is really high, and since nominal GDP is going up, apparently the issue here is inflation. By the way, I made the cards, and this is a teacher tip, I don't mention this in the other video. I made the cards to where uh, they can probably get enough information on the very top portion. So if you want to cut out the last little sentence, you can. Uh, it would make it significantly more difficult and it would harder to have a conversation, uh, but it basically makes it more academically difficult to do that. So if you want to cut off this part on all the, the cards, that's fine. Also, by the way, when I use these numbers, I'm talking about United States inflation. Some other country, 10% might be good, like Venezuela right now. I'd love to have 10% inflation, but uh, for this purpose, we're talking about the United States. Anyways, let's get back to the activity. The student reads this and tells the whole group, and then the, each individual student um, clicks on the website. They have their own phone, their own computer. Remember, they're not doing this as a group. They're working on their own, and it's a secret. So they're going to click over here on each one of them, and it's going to tell them the Fed action, the reserve requirement, and initial change. In my case, Fed action says this is a decrease in the discount rate, the reserve requirement equals uh, 0.1, and then it's a $10 initial change. Again, students are writing this down uh, in secret so that other people don't know. You're not doing this as a whole. That's important to tell the students because they're gonna confuse, like, well, we only need one computer. No, 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 each person does this. Don't show other people, it's a secret. So a decrease in the discount rate, is going to increase the money supply. This is the part where they have to actually use economics. Uh, we know the reserve ratio is 0.1, so the multiplier is 10. 10 times 10 is 100, so the initial change in the money supply is an increase. Make sure they know that. You can put a plus sign, uh, but it's an increase of $100. Again, obviously not realistic. $100 is not much in the economy, but for our game purposes, all that really matters, they understand how to calculate the money supply. There's two different ways to run this activity. The first one is everyone will just share how they did, and whoever did the best uh, automatically gets the point. So in this case, uh, obviously there's high inflation and we want to decrease the money supply and in increase interest rates. So I increase the money supply, which is bad. Like, again, uh, it's important for students to know, obviously it wasn't their fault. They knew what to do, but because uh, the computer and the random, uh, you know, Fed action that the computer gave me, I did not get the right thing. So it's a game of chance, right? Not a game of knowledge and skill, but they're using their knowledge to figure out, did I help or did I not help the economy? So the knowledge is still being used. Anyways, I increase the money supply by $100. That's not helping the economy. I definitely am not going to get the point. And if nobody else helps the economy either, then no one gets the point in that round and we just move on to the next district. So if everyone caused an increase in the money supply, then no one gets a point and then we move on. Um, if somebody decreased the money supply by whatever amount, then that is helping the economy in this case because we're trying to fight inflation. And so that person would get the one point. And if somebody else tied them, they, you know, they both decrease money supply by $20 um, or something like that, then that they both tie, then they both get a point. That's the first way to run this activity is just who was better. The other way of running this activity is allowing the students to lie. And that's the instructions that I gave uh, up here. Uh, it talks about uh, students are allowed to lie. So because I calculated this in secret and I you know, wrote this down, I wrote down increase my supply, I can say to the group when, when we report our results, I can go, uh, mine decreased the money supply by 100. Right? And someone else might say, I decreased mine by 50, and mine got decreased by 20. Mine increased by 100, right? So these three different, you know, four different players report their scores. But I lied about my score. And if I lie about my score, I don't have to tell anybody that I lied. If somebody calls me out on it, though, someone says fraud, then, that, and I have to show them my results, right? And by the way, by showing the results, not the paper, I have to show them my computer screen. So I have to say, okay, here you go. If I didn't lie and they called fraud on me, then they don't move on to uh, the next district. If I did lie, then I don't move on 
to the next district. And the idea here is you want to get through the districts as fast as possible because whoever gets to district uh, one, the fastest, gets three points. And that three points might win or lose the game at the end. So again, there's some details here. There's two ways to run the activity. One, we allow students not to lie. And you say, okay, who did better? And the other one is we allow them to lie and then call each other out on it. And that changes uh, if they progress uh, through the board faster than other people. I debated if I wanted people to lie because um, that's obviously not how the Federal Reserve works. I mean, none of this is true to how the Fed works. It's just, this is just a game. So one of the problems I had with this is just the name alone. FedEx is fix the economy. I mean, there's a bunch of you right now probably thinking like, well, the Fed doesn't fix the economy. I mean, it can maybe improve a little bit. Some of you are thinking like, the Fed doesn't help it really at all if you're an Austrian economist. But the fact remains that I'm trying to help my students understand this stuff to do well in the AP test and understand monetary policy in general. We can have the debate about how effective it is and if the Fed is actually run by the Illuminati some other time, but for our purposes, I'm just having them practice how to calculate the money multiplier, how to see how an economy is doing based on a little bit of data, and also how does the Fed use monetary policy to try to help the economy, and what would work and what wouldn't work, and that's all I'm really trying to do here.